everybody. My name is Anna. I own Zoom Groom in Hopkins, Minnesota. I'm also Zoom Groom Anna on Instagram. Um, today I'm going to be doing an educational video on how to groom an Old English Sheepdog. Uh, today I'll be working with Yorick. Uh, Yorick is, this is his first time here, and he has a full hand scissor. Um, his coat feels a little thick, um, might have some matting, but we'll just kind of assess as we go. Um, so let's get started. Apply diluted shampoo to the dry coat. This saves water and time. Applying diluted shampoo to an already damp coat will over dilute the shampoo. You want to make sure the first shampoo really penetrates the dirt, debris, and buildup on the coat and skin. When bathing very long, thick coats, I make a claw with my fingers and scrub directionally through the coat. Going back and forth or in circles could cause matting. Always make sure to scrub in between the toes. Always apply shampoo underneath the grooming loop. You may need to loosen it in order to do so. This area holds a lot of dirt and debris. Apply the shampoo away from the eyes, nose, and mouth. Use your fingers to work the product in near sensitive areas. I like to start the first rinse far away from the head, which helps get them used to the water. Make sure to use a lot of water pressure in order to really loosen and rinse away the dirt and debris. Do a nice slow introduction to water on their head. I lightly rinse their eyes in case any shampoo particles happen to get in them. I apply a face wash before applying the second shampoo. The face wash has more of a scent to help their face smell fresher and it also helps eliminate greasy buildup from their eyes and their food. Don't be afraid to use a generous amount of shampoo. I condition every dog. Conditioner replaces the healthy natural oils that the shampoo strips out. This helps promote healthy skin and coat. Always work the conditioner deep into the coat. I apply the conditioner on top of the last shampoo. This saves time and water. It also helps ensure I don't over condition the coat. Start the last rinse on their head and work your way down and back. Use lots of water pressure and be sure to feel the coat and make sure all the product is out. Don't forget to rinse underneath the grooming loop. Squeeze excess water out of the coat before towel drying. I use cotton towels to soak up the water from the coat. The more water you can remove from the coat, the faster they will dry. I use a happy hoodie on all my dogs. This helps protect their ears from the noise of the dryer and helps reduce anxiety. I use a variety of sprays, especially on a long, thick coat like this one. It really helps loosen matting, give the coat a nice shine and feel, and helps reduce static. I use a generous amount, especially on these long, thick, and matted coats. Anytime you're drying long coats, they have a tendency to get tangled up in the dryer. Make sure to dry it directionally and any time you start to see the coat twist and tangle, move the air further away from the coat in order to prevent that. Make sure to dry all the way down to the skin. If the coat is still damp anywhere, it'll be much harder to brush out and it won't finish out nicely. You can use a brush when dealing with these long matted coats to help release the matting. Remove the nozzle attachment on the dryer hose and go back through the entire coat to ensure you got everything 100% dry. Use your hands to feel the coat as you're doing this. If you feel any dampness, continue to dry the damp area until it is dry to the touch. Make sure to dry underneath any straps along with the grooming loop.
Avoid blowing air directly into their eyes, ears, and nose. If the dog gets nervous, try turning the dryer down on a low speed and give lots of positive reinforcement. Make sure to use a brushing spray of some sort to comb them out to protect their coat from breakage. I use a long pin slicker brush and a long wide tooth comb for combing out pups with thick coats. It is important to get all the way down to the skin level. You may need to separate out the coat in order to do so. York's coat is very packed in at the skin, so you'll see me using an undercoat rake to break apart and release the matting. Sometimes it's okay to ask for help. Everyone needs help from time to time, especially with big projects. I won't come out a dog if the matting is severe, and if I decide to come out a dog, I do charge for it. In this case, York's owners have been grooming him at home, and this is his first professional grooming session. His owners did a pretty good job of keeping him mat free, but he has a lot of dead packed in coat trapped at the skin level. I chose to comb him out this time since York seems to be tolerating it, and I will be educating his owners on how to properly care for his coat. I will be giving them suggestions on what tools to have on hand, products to use, and a schedule to maintain his coat. I will also be charging them quite a lot for dematting. I ended up charging about $150 in dematting charges and roughly $300 for the groom. I use a number 40 blade when doing paw pads. I like to really get the pads cleaned out. I will spread apart the toes and really work my clipper into the crevices. You need to be mindful of the webbing in between the toes and pads, and you need to be careful not to cut them. I try to angle my clipper in ways that don't end up catching the webbing. I take it slow and get small sections at a time. I'm also using my leg and body to support him while I'm doing his paw pads. It's important to keep the pup comfortable when grooming their feet not overextending their legs and also giving them support while they're standing on three legs can really help. It can be really tricky to hold the long hair out of the way of the clipper and this is something that everyone struggles with. Just try to gather it the best you can with your holding hand and again take your time. Don't shave the hair along the outer edge of the foot, try to focus on the center. You want the hair on the outer edge for when you scissor the foot. When clipping nails, I use what I call a shaving method. I like to just clip a minimal amount off at a time. I watch for the quick to appear in the middle of the nail. On a black nail, it'll appear as a small black dot with a small amount of white surrounding it. On a white nail, it'll appear pink, sometimes a very, very light shade of pink. When dremeling the nails, really focus on smoothing and rounding the edges. Work the dremel all the way around the tip of the nail a couple of times. Make sure to help support the pup when doing their nails and try to keep them comfortable by not overextending their legs. I use the number 10 blade on the sanitary. I like to shave with the grain which greatly reduces razor burn reactions. If a very sensitive dog comes in, I will only skim with a number 10 blade and will use a comb attachment to clean up the larger areas. Your goal is to clean up the sanitary area enough so they don't get bathroom on themselves.
I use a 6 inch curve shear when trimming paws. I always start with the bottom of the paw. I comb everything down and trim the sides and rear of the paw flush with the paw pad. Then I set the foot down and make my first cut across the front of the foot. Try not to expose the toenails. Once the front is cut, then just connect the front and back along the sides creating a half moon shape. Holding your shears at a roughly 45 degree angle from the table will help create a nice bevel. Using a thinner along the edges can create a really soft natural look. As a finishing touch, pick up the paw and thin along the underside, just to make sure there aren't any hairs sticking out along the bottom. When I'm doing a full hand scissor, I like to start with the paws, work my way up the legs, trim the body, and finish with the head. I am using a wide tooth comb to fluff up the coat and an 8 inch straight shear to trim the hair. It's important to fluff the hair up with the comb starting from the bottom and working your way up or starting from the back and working your way forwards. I am just lightly pulling the hair out and up with the comb. Make sure to trim around the entire leg. I like to section out the leg. I oftentimes start with the hawk as one section, trimming the outside, inside, back and front, and then move on to the thigh and trim the outside, inside, back and front. Always make sure to change the angles in which you're looking at the leg in order to catch hairs that might be sticking out. The goal is to have the legs and paws look like pillars. So I just trim the top of the paw right into the leg. When trimming the body, I try to follow the length I set on the legs. I'm using a chunker on the body instead of a shear to help achieve a softer look. This is also a bit more forgiving on the coat and shows less scissoring marks. I prefer to scissor pups armpits as opposed to shaving them. I find that scissoring them creates a more even look. Sometimes when shaving them, it will leave a hole in their coat, so I only shave if there's matting. Yorick is getting a non-traditional sheepdog face. His owners like it shorter and tidy in order to keep it cleaner. When trimming the head, I like to start with trimming the lip line. I trim tight along the lip line and use my thinner to blend it up into the muzzle. Sometimes you have to pull hairs out of their mouth in order to do a thorough job of trimming. On Yorick, I'm using a thinning shear in between his eyes. I'm using the thinning shear in order to achieve a soft, natural look. I'm only trimming the very inner corner of his eyes. Yorick's owners like him to sport a top knot. Because York's chin is so short, I'm going to scissor the front of his neck a bit tighter in order to blend and have a nice transition. Trimming this area shorter will also help prevent any matting caused by the collar.
I use the back of the neck to blend the scissored body into the top knot. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe as it helps this channel out so much. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can keep up to date with my latest videos. We'll see you next time.